So the first project of the day was to build the landing for the stairs to get to the second floor of, or the second floor office up here. Um, so I am running a 3-0 door, which is 36 inches, but I want to do the stairs at 42 inches wide. And I wanted to build the landing a little bigger than I needed so I can get up there and kind of make a turn to move furniture or whatever up in there. So to do on this is I'm going to show you guys an easy way to make stairs. All right, so I've got this cantilevered over. That's a 2 by 8 by 12 and there's a 75% rule, if you will. If you're gonna cantilever anything, you need to make sure that 75% of your board length uh, is on this side of your load-bearing wall with only 25% exposed, and that makes it strong. Plus, we've got Simpson uh, half-inch strong tie lags in right there, so we're, we're rock solid on this cantilever. All right, so uh, let's take a look. At, there's there's a math way to figure this out right and i want to show you guys an easy way to do things like what I, I try to do so there's there's a math way you can figure this out and there's different ways you can do stairs but there are online stair calculators i think mycarpentry.com is one and they have they have stair calculators and it makes this stuff real easy all right so first thing you got to do you'll input this number here which is the total rise and what that is is you're measuring from the floor to the very top of where your stairs you want them to be including the subflooring that you want to mate it to i'm using a three quarter inch subfloor but i'm using a one and a half inch tread we got to take that into consideration so because we want the top tread to mate with the subflooring and be flush so i've got a 105 and three quarter total rise inch and a half tread using the three-quarter subfloor all right now my ideal what i wanted was a seven and a half inch rise with a ten and a half inch run this is a very comfortable stair that'll result in a 35.7 degree angle uh, this is typically around about what you would see sometimes you'll see an 11 inch run maybe a seven inch rise uh, if it's going into a home built for an older person make it a little easier to uh, climb the stairs. So that being said, I wanted, because there may have some people going up these stairs, I wanted them to be a little more comfortable than the ones going to the parts. So I started with a seven and a half inch rise, 10 and a half inch run. That's gonna yield 14 steps. The first step is going to be six and a 16th of an inch on the first step, okay? And then that'll give me even stairs all the way up and my total run would be 147 inches. And that's, uh, yeah, total run's gonna be 147. So that's basically, you got 10 and a half inches of run, and then you multiply that out 12, uh, by 14 steps, and you get a 147 total run, basically. Rough numbers, but that's close enough. Now, when I calculated all this out, in order to get my inch and a half tread to mate with my three quarter inch subflooring, I actually need to make my rise seven and nine sixteenths. So not too much more, but that'll still be nice. Seven and nine sixteenths, 10 and a half inch run, 14 steps, boo, 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 there we go. Now what I need to do is double check that I have enough room for 147 inches for my run. This with a caveat, the big disclaimer thing, I am not a professional carpenter, okay? <laughs> I am not a professional carpenter. Uh, I did grow up building things, and I like building things. So uh, sometimes, what well, they say, it's good enough for government work. Apologies to everybody that's a government employee, but that's what they say, right? So uh, as long as it's structurally sound, remember, one of my big things about this channel, guys, is get out and try something. Try something new. Build something, right? It is a great deal of pride that comes in it. This type of stuff, yeah, I like for perfect. But I'm going to get it as perfect as I can get it. But what I do know is that it's going to be structurally sound following building codes and that sort of thing. So uh, the caveat, I'm not a professional carpenter. So if you leave any comments and you've got any constructive criticism, leave it down there. If you want to say nasty stuff, go somewhere else. All right, so we need a hundred and run here. Now I do have, I ended up moving this wall opening. I, well, I've got this door opening here. I decided to move my door opening over there. 
so it's hard to do this with a uh, hold a camera and all that fun stuff. The original door opening was here, and I was going to locate the stairs somewhere else. And I wanted comfortable, and I didn't have quite enough room to get that rise and run. So door opening, I'm actually just going to slam studs back in there, and then this will be a wall. So uh, 147 inches uh, is right there, but we need to add 49 and a half inches because of our landing. Okay, so let's just say four feet. We're getting pretty close. So we're at 12 feet. Let's see, we're going to land at 16 feet. That's perfect. So our stairs should land right here at 16 feet. All right. And the great thing about that is there's the door opening for the bathroom. So it'll uh, a swing out door here will not hit the stairs. And I'll have enough room to bring a handrail down so the door won't hit the stairs. I'm golden there. So where we should land is real close to right there. Actually, I need to add, let me think. Nope, I'm good. All right, we should be somewhere right here at about 16 feet. That's where we should land. Now let me show you how to lay it out on the board. Just use a stair calculator, and I'm going to show you a quick, easy way to do this. You guys that are carpenters, y'all know how to do this stuff anyway. So uh, let me show you how to lay it out. All right, first thing, get yourself a 2 by 12 You need to make sure it's long enough. So this is going to be a long set of stairs. So I went with a, a 2 by 12 by 16 which put me just right to reduce as much waste as possible. I'm not a big fan of waste. So uh, 2 by 12 by 16 is going to work right on this one. You may have to go with a 20 depending on the length of your staircase. So the first thing you do is get yourself a nice little handy carpenter square just like this. And then get yourself some of these little thread on brass things right and what you do is you set this edge right here at your rise set this edge right here on your run so remember we're at seven and nine sixteenths and we're at ten and a half right there then you start at the top of your board and do just like that and you trace around it then you can slide down made it at the top up there make another mark and just work your way just like that all the way down the board making your marks, all right? Now, one of the things you also want to do is double check the condition of the board. If you'll notice, I strategically placed this to cut this knot out, all right? There is a knot right here, but it's not all the way through. It's on the surface, and I can see on the side here it looks good. So you don't want any knots in this area right here, and you may find you have to move back and forth to get the knots cut out. And you'll notice this one right here, but it's on a run and it's not down here on the torsion side. So I'm not concerned about that one. And notice we have no other knots of significance. I did have this one on the edge right here and it does go all the way through. However, that's being cut off. So if we go back to the top, you'll notice this is my last step that's going to go against... Uh, yeah, that's going to go against my rim joist, all right? So this is your top step. Now that you've made your marks, you flip it over, and you can make that mark or just get a square, measure 10 and a half inches here, which is my run, make a mark at 90 degrees, and that's the edge that will butt against uh, our rim joist. So if we count each run, and I like to just kind of put a mark in here just so you can keep track of it. But if we count, we have one, and we work our way all the way to the bottom here to 14, which is our last one right here. Now, if you remember, I had mentioned that my first step needs to be six and a sixteenth inches. All right, so this is step number 14. I marked it out one more to give me this 90 degree here. And then I measured down for my first step, which is six and a sixteenth off of the floor and make another 90 degree mark there. Then all this cut gets cut away. All of that, everywhere I have an X gets cut away. And stringer. Then we're going to put it up there, check it, make sure it's good. And then uh, we'll just use this as a template to make the other two. Uh, there's one other little step I wanna show you. Kicker, 
all right? Because when we put this stair on the concrete, we want to make sure that it's not going to push forward and come off of our rim joist. So I'm going to draw a square. I'm going to put the phone down for a second. And I'm going to draw a square right here, inch and a half. And then I'm going to come over three and a half because that's the size of a two by four. And uh, so I'm going to cut a little notch out right here for that kicker. And I'll show you in just a second. There we go. So cutting out for a kicker. Again, a two by four is not two by four. It's an inch and a half by three and a half. To glug glug glug. So we cut that out and that'll be for the kicker. Didn't need to, uh, you guys didn't need to watch me do a bunch of cutting. So anyway, here's what we got. So once I flush that out on the bottom there, you're going to see I've got, that's right at an inch and a half, or excuse me, three quarters of an inch between that top step and the top. So when I put my inch and a half tread on there, plus the three quarter inch subfloor, uh, they'll flush out. So I'm a three quarter there. So nice rise and run. And down here on the bottom, we're golden. I didn't realize I'm a couple inches past where I thought we would be, but I knew I was well within the width of that door, so no big deal. Now, uh, one other little trick I want to tell you, I'm not overly concerned with it, but if I was like building these in a home or something like that, one thing that you can do instead of pre-cutting this bottom here, all right, what you can do is go up there and raise this whole thing up uh, a little bit uh, and then leave this other end long. Then you take a board, lay it flat here, run a pencil across it. So in other words, if you put a, say a, you know, a, a two by four here, which is an inch and a half, you would raise it an inch and a half on the other side, put a board here, draw a line, and then cut to that line. And then you would know that you're going to be perfectly parallel to the floor there. I know that's a rough explanation, but we're good to go there. So now that we know that it fits, the next part is going to be to, uh, since I know my sheet good is going to be three quarter inch, I'm going to space this stringer out three quarter inch from the wall with just a couple of pieces of scrap to make sure I have enough room to slide my sheet goods behind that stringer. And then I will equally space the uh, stringers out right there. And uh, there we go. So now we take this, trace it out on two more boards, and go back to cutting. Man, what a day. It's been a long day. Hadn't shot a ton of video actually doing what I did, <laughs> or while I was doing it, because it's just running saws and stuff. There's nothing exciting about that stuff, really. But uh, I, I don't know. I started this morning about 6, 6.30. It's, uh, it's 10 o'clock right now. So it's been, uh, what's that, uh, 12... 16 hour day. I'm pretty wore out. I actually haven't eaten anything today either. This is a great weight loss plan. Actually, I take that back. I did have some peanut butter crackers and I had a couple of pop tarts. So I'm going to go get something to, something to eat at, uh, at the folks house there. And, uh, um, I understand there's meatloaf and stuff's waiting on me, which would be absolutely wonderful. So at least I'll show you what I got done today. And then we're going to wrap this video up. And then tomorrow, well, I'll go over what I got done today. Uh, I got the cantilever done. That was one and two here, so I did get that done. Uh, got my stairs in, and uh, got those braced up there. And actually, we'll walk up. We'll walk up and have a look. So I did get the stairs in, and we'll give it a check. And uh, of course, I've checked along the way, but. I don't know why my phone's not focusing. There we go. We're level. And we're level. So we're golden. And uh, it actually turned out to be not to be a really comfortable set of stairs. Um, ended up using uh, two by 12s uh, for all the treads. So with that 10 and a half inch run and then the two by 12, I've got a nice little overhang, which is what I wanted, that right there. This little lip there on it. So uh, 10 and a half inch run, figure on the board, basically what I've got is an 11 inch step by the time you uh, do that. So anyway, so of course it's glued and nailed. 
uh, three inchers, four on each stringer, and then uh, got our platform in, glued and down, so we're all good. The next thing I got done is uh, uh, scissored in rim joist right here on this edge, and I'll show you the top of my posts. Those are my six by six posts. Can't see too much, but I did get them notched in, and uh, this is gonna be on the outside to match the other side if you saw in the other uh, video there. But uh, anyway, so I'll be running, you know, a double uh, on that beam. Uh, so, so give me another little oh, there. What we got going on? Uh, I do want to address a couple of comments uh, that came in from the video that I put up uh, announcing. Um, one person asked an interesting question. Actually, it came two or three people. And you guys uh, mentioned that they were machinists. And they said that they had a difficult time being efficient doing carpentry work because, you know, in the world of machining, we live, well, I do anyway, you know, I live four zeros to the right of a decimal point. You know, we're de dealing with a tenth of an inch. And their question was, how do you deal with that when you're doing carpentry work? Because the reality is, you know, guys, one of the guys said he's doing everything he can do to get down to a 30 seconds of an inch. And uh, yeah, so uh, let me answer that question. The, the way that I look at it is there are several types of carpentry, just like there's several types of machining. Right? There's certain things you can machine that if you're within five thou plus or minus, it's good enough. But when you're doing very precision machining, aircraft world, tool and die uh, engines, all right, you got to be more precise than that. So in the carpentry world, again, I'm not a professional carpenter, all right? Let me, <laughs> disclaimer, right? Um, but, you know, framing, that's one level, rough framing. Right. If you're within a sixteenth, and in all honesty, some cases within an eighth, if you're building a shed or something like that, sometimes that's even close enough. Uh, but and that sounds ridiculous. But you got to consider what you're using it for, right? So I would say the le level of precision you need to maintain with your carpentry work is relative to the use and the, what the finished product is intended to be. So rough framing. If you're within a sixteenth, man, run with it. Go, go, go. If you're doing finished carpentry moldings, copings, things like that, of course, you want to be tight, dead nut on the numbers as close as you can get. But then you got to remember too, wood moves and changes very much like metal, but more so. Moisture, all these things. So I never fit anything exactly tight unless it's finished carpentry and we're dealing with, you know, wood that we know is 100% dry, kiln dried, and it's all that. Again, finished carpentry type stuff. So that's just my tidbit on it. But I wanted to give you guys an enormous thank you. Thank you for everyone's positive comments. Uh, just one rolling in after another uh, in support of what I'm doing here. And, you know, just I'm so humbled by it, you know, that, that so many of you have recognized, you know, hard work, dedication, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and you're happy for me, right? That means the world to me, guys. So again, thank you. So I'm not, I won't do, do much more of that. I'll, I'll say you guys know I appreciate you and your comments and, and all that stuff. Uh, it means the world, it really does. So we're gonna say goodbye to the stairs one more time. And I'm gonna go hop in the truck and go eat some meatloaf. See you guys tomorrow. We're gonna try to get walls tilted up. We're gonna get the 12 foot mezzanine put in over there. So it's going to be a little, another late nighter. Take care of yourselves and each other. Love you guys and gals. See you next time.